afternoon. Uh, my name is Venki. I'm a product manager with UiPath. And today what we're going to discuss about for the next 20, 25 minutes is automation as a service. So it's a typical disclaimer. <laughs> so if you look at any organization, currently talks about digital transformation. And we all know that one of the key enablers of digital transformation is cloud enablement, as well as automation. So we are in the automation space. We help companies accelerate and enable their digital transformation. However, we are still not there in the cloud space. So customers today can go ahead and put the uh, orchestrator in the cloud, uh, in their own cloud. However, orchestrator is not, or automation is not provided as a service. So this is the gap which we are trying to bridge right now. So if you take it, any of this cloud adoption markets, any of the applications right now, whether it is a CRM or, or a ERP, every organization or every software company has a cloud option. You could also see the trend has been always on the high. And many organizations, whether it is a small and medium business organizations or it's the Fortune 500s, the world, all of them are slowly but surely moving into the cloud. And this graph speaks for itself that year over year, the customers are getting into clouds and ditching their on-prem. And a true testament to the fact is if you look at uh, how the cloud companies are doing as a whole, take AWS, Amazon, for example, or take Azure, for example. If you take, if you happen to look at how Microsoft performs in the last one year, their typical growth rate for a surface or an office is, let's say, 7% to 15% to 20%. However, if you look at the Azure growth, it's 90%. So they're growing year on year over 90%. So this shows that there are a lot of customers in the market who wants to be who wants to get into the digital transformation through cloud. And that is the gap we are trying to fill in through this product. So what we are essentially offering is automation as a service. So what is the value it offers to our customers? Start instantly with simple setup. So what this means? So if an enterprise, as of today, if an enterprise wants to start their automation journey, they have to go ahead and do an upfront investment of buying an orchestrator, which is a bit costly, $20,000 a year. And then they have to go ahead and set up that in their environment. They have to have a maintenance team. They have to ensure that the updates works properly, so on and so forth. So if an organization wants to kickstart an automation journey, and they don't want to do an upfront inv investment, this is the place. So we are going to help them ensure they go ahead and start a quick POC, start small, ensure that they really see a value in automation, get the ROIs done, and then go big. So we would help them enable, and this product will help them enable, kickstart the automation journey very fast. Second thing is go from POC to production. So in a typical RP implementation, let's say it takes eight to nine weeks, or 10 to 12 weeks, with this new product, we will dramatically bring down the implementation time. So it's going to be like three to four weeks or five to six weeks. Scale easily as you grow in a new platform. So you start small, you establish your ROI, you ensure that this works for you, and then as and when you need, you can go ahead and grow big. And the most important thing which we take very seriously is trusted. So one of the key questions which most of you have in your mind is you're going to get into cloud, and a lot of our customers have questions, so how is security going to be? So we are going to ensure that this product goes through all the security certifications to ensure that this product is cloud ready, and also that we have an extensive security team to ensure this product is trusted, that you guys and the customers can always use. And last but not the least is always up to date. So one of the beautiful benefits of being in cloud is, to end, is, is the ability to stay a friend and with the latest updates. You don't have to wait for an up update. You don't have to do the upgrades by yourself. We do the upgrades for you, and you get to see all the benefits of cloud as an well. So what are the values for partners here? The market segment expansion. So we don't, uh, so one of the friction points for many organizations is the upfront investment they have to make. So what we are going to do is we're going to help partners get into customers who even wanted to, who is just on the verge of automation or who wants to think about automation, even if it's a small and medium business companies or in the mid segment. So this helps our partners to go ahead and reach a new set of customers who are not 
currently using automation mainly because of a cost factor. And the second point is the land and expand. So even if it's a small organization or big organization, you can just go ahead and start small in a small uh, business unit or a small function, maybe it's a HR at finance, through a worth of the automation and then go ahead and expand. So this provides a lot of opportunities for partners as well as for the customer. The last is a fast, fast and feature delivery. As we are in cloud, we control the upgrades and we ensure that you get the latest and the best as early as possible and you don't have to wait, and you don't have to do the upgrades by yourself. So what does this mean for you guys? So Q2 2019, we'll be having community, all the community users, which is basically platform.yvipar.com, which I believe all of you or most of you are in, will be migrated to this new platform. So you get to be the first set of people who happen to uh, experience it, and I will be happy to get all your feedbacks and comments. So Q1, sorry, Q2 2019, get to see all these features available, and any new signups for platform.uipath.com will be through this cloud service. So these are the basically, so at a high level, the two set of plans which we offer. The first one, the community plan, or the free plan you may, may call. So this is essentially the same set of offerings which you have as part of today, as a platform.uipath.com. This is targeting an individuals and organization want to try out various capabilities before going ahead and making the actual purchase. So this is essentially for people like you and for organizations to get started to understand and do some POS. And then comes the business plan. This is for enterprises and organizations to run robots or to enable the automation in the production systems. And this is what we provide as part of UA Cloud to provide a platform or automation as a service that the customers can go ahead and start enabling the automation. So let me give you a sneak peek of the product. So the product is still work in progress, so but we felt that it's a good idea for us to go ahead and show some of the uh, slides and give you some feedbacks. Okay. So this is how the cloud or automation as a service product looks like. So this is the portal. So let's say Q2, once we release this product, you go ahead and do a sign up. You enter all your details get an email for activation, you click on the link, and you land. So as you see on the left, these are the various navigations which you have. Uh, let me go through one by one, I have some screens which I can talk about. So the first landing page you have the dashboard. So this dashboard basically talks about uh, all the information which you need to know as when you log in into this. So you get an understanding of how many licenses are used, how many are still unused, uh, a good understanding of what is the license usage trend, you get to see it based on the number of days, and this is an aggregated view across all the services. So I'll come to that, what is servicing? Servicing. So service instance is, is a logical separation of all your robots, processors, users, and usage. So let's give it, take an example. So let's take uh, a company like Pepsi, Pepsi India. Okay, Pepsi India wants to ensure that they have they have automation COE, and they wanted to ensure that they have a, a clear segregation between the HR versus a supply chain versus finance. So they can go ahead and create a Pepsi supply chain service instance, a Pepsi HR service instance, and a Pepsi finance service instance. And they can go ahead and allocate license to each one of the service instances, and also add users to each of the services. So if you want to draw a parallel to what we have currently in Orchestrator, each one of the service instances here map to a tenant in the platform.uy.com or an orchestra. So uh, you would go ahead, so in the cloud world, you will have the ability to create service instances here, and you can see the list of the service instances, and from here, you can go ahead and launch the orchestrator for each of the services. Next is the user. So consider users as a master list of all the employees within the organization who you want automation, who you want to be part of the uh, automation effort. So here, as you could see, a list of all the users who wants to be part of the automation. And let's say uh, 
let's take the previous example of Pepsi. So all the Pepsi employees or all the employees relevant to automation will be part of here. And I created a new service instance called Pepsi HR. And I go ahead and ensure that within the Pepsi HR, I add these set of users into that particular service. Instance. So only the relevant users who are part of that particular service get access to that particular service. Instance. However, this is a master list. So, so this is a, a good tool for an admin to ensure that these are the total number of users I have. Who, when was the last active? I've sent an invitation to them. They have not got into the tool. That's where you see the pending invitation. So all those other informations you could get to see here, this is like a central manager of users. Then comes the license. So what we wanted to provide as part of this offering is to ensure that there is a single portal for anyone on the cloud to go ahead and do any operations they want. That we don't want them to go to a different tool for licenses, different tool to go ahead and do support, different tool to go ahead and look at the profile, so on and so forth. So you can get into the cloud portal. You could see a tab called licenses where you could see all the set of licenses you have. You could see the number of uh, licenses which the company has purchased or which your account has purchased. You can see the subscription when it is expiring. And most importantly of all, you have the ability to go ahead and request licenses right here from So you moment you raise a request saying that, hey, I need five more attended robots, or I want to renew my subscription to two more years or one more year. It can be done by the admin right from here. And then the sales operation happens in the back end. And once the sales operation is completed, you can see the numbers main, or uh, numbers updated or reflected here. So that's one of the benefits of being here in this portal that you have all the set of operations available right here in the cloud. Then the resource center. Similar to the earlier point, anyone who wants to start automation, anyone who's new to automation, or anyone, uh, or if a new employee want to onboard into automation, all they have to have is get access to this page, get access to this portal. So they can go ahead and see the resource center. They can go ahead and see all the documentation link which is available, which you guys are already familiar of. And you can also go ahead and download uh, all the download downloadables like Studio. In future, we'll have robots as well. So anyone who does, uh, like even a small, uh, as even an employee or a business unit uh, analyst who doesn't have great expertise, let's say in automation, all they have to come is get into this portal, go ahead and download, and start automation. So that's the benefit of uh, this portal. And the last but not the least is the support. So what this Support is basically if you are a business user, if you're, if you're part of the business plan, you can go ahead and start raising tickets right from the support tab. So currently in the first version, we will still open up in a new tab, but you really want to ensure a place where you have the uh, list of all the cases you have. You also have the ability to raise new cases. You can take the status of the cases. And as we see in the last session, they were talked about UI Connect. So we are also going to integrate UI Connect with, with this portal. So the whole idea here is uh, we want to have this portal, which is in the cloud, to be a central administration platform to do all kind of capabilities, both your automation as well as a place for you to go from any of the access, any of the other resources, as well as your profile and other. So that is pretty much I have. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending the session. So uh, before I take questions, I'd like to invite my colleague, Aditya who is the engineering manager of this project. Thank you, Ed. So any questions, comments, feedback, or suggestions? Yes. So, uh, so the current model is we will follow with the similar licensing model. But in the, uh, the roadmap, we definitely want to get into a model where we would enable a paper use but it's not in the immediate. Uh, machines we have available here. Um, as a cloud platform, how, how are we able to uh, connect with the machine, uh, uh, screen names, infrastructure point of view? Okay. Um, how can we connect to the machine? For example, let's say we here we have a studio machine. 
Uh, not connecting to a machine here at all. This is a cloud administration platform. Okay. A service instance, basically, uh, if you uh, do see the service instances that are provided as a part of the first iteration of the cloud platform, we would support uh, orchestrator services, one of the services that we support from a cloud platform standpoint. So eventually there'll be more offerings that as they come from uh, UiPath, we will be exposing them as service offerings within cloud platform. And this service instance basically launches an orchestrator um, page for you to work with the way you work today with orchestrator. So a service instance is necessarily a tenant in orchestrator. Yeah, well. So we, uh, as of version one, we are not really working towards managing machines or running the robots directly on the machines from a cloud platform standpoint. So we're not yet there yet. So okay. we are looking at managing your instances, your cloud uh, instances, especially the server components of your uh, RPA network, the orchestrator deployment and stuff like that will be managed as a part of the first instance. Of cloud. So if we have an instance, for example, let's say if we, if we create an instance yeah. and uh, you need to start developing a, 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 a process. Yes. So, uh, so how it how it is progressing? Like for example, as I can see, I know that uh, this machine will be uh, staying in a cloud. I need to have. A so let let me let me clarify some of the points. Yeah, sure. First thing is the orchestrator is going to be in the cloud. Yeah. The robots studios are still going to be in the local machine of the okay. developer. Okay. So the way you connect today, either your robot or your studio to your orchestrator, it's the same way. You're going to take the URL from the web browser and you're going to paste it in your robot in the robot tray, or you're going to publish your packages from your studio to the orchestrator. Okay. So the only difference thing is, earlier the orchestrator used to be in the premise. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be in the cloud, which we are going to maintain. OK. That's the offering here. Yeah. It's yeah. The, the only the orchestrator, not a, anything regarding the hardware. Yeah, so for the, for, the, for the first version, our intention is to take the biggest pain point which the customer has, yeah. which is to move the orchestrator and take them away from all the maintenance and upgrades. And the future roadmap, we have some plans to enable. How do we enable other workloads also into the cloud? Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Any further? Uh, so under the licenses tab, there are two separate licenses. One is for the orchestrator, and one is service. What's the difference? Yeah. So the one on the left is the typical orchestrator license, which you are all aware of. Right, so the attended, unattended robots, studio, and non-production robots. So the one on the right is is something which we're trying to experiment, which is still not finalized. It's basically you see the number of uh, service instances here. So what what we want to do is we want to give a predefined number of service instances for everyone, and then if you want additional, you can go ahead and purchase. So that's the concept we're trying to come up with. Yeah, yeah, it's tenant. So if uh, the the, uh, the one, this is exactly a one is to one mapping with the orchestrator tenant as of today. So ABC here translates to one tenant in orchestrator. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, perfect. Thank you very much for your time. I, we are really looking forward for your feedback on Q2 2019 and happy automation.